Hello and welcome back to Teens on Topic. I'm your host, Cedric Hughes, and today we'll be talking about our hopes for 2020. But first, let's take a look at what members of the community have to say. So what are your hopes for 2020? I hope that we do more to help our planet and counteract climate change. What are your hopes for 2020? An end to the madness. Thank you. What are your hopes for 2020? I believe that my <laughs> hope for 2020 would have to be getting, getting good grades. Because, like, you know, grades are the most important thing at the moment. My hopes is to get my grades up because I'm not really doing too good. I need to at least get some C's so I can not repeat the grade, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Can I shout myself out? Y'all yeah. should follow the gram. Y -R, wait, y dot R dot N dot Dylan. What are your hopes for 2020? Uh, my hope is, like, to get, like, Basically, just keep up with school and then, like, pass this year. Yeah, that's my hopes. Good luck. Thank you. What are your hopes for 2020? Uh, my hopes for 2020, I would think would be, um, I think it's just a better community, uh, just all around the world. I think maybe more people advocating for, like, peace. Uh, I think it can be done. It's just, I think we just have to cross barriers to really understand each other, but also just reach a common goal too, so. We saw a lot of interesting opinions from members of the Davis community. Uh, but first, looking big picture, we saw a lot of the members um, talking about international things. Uh, the first woman, she mentioned climate change. So on a global scale, what do you guys think of that as being one of the most pressing matters that we as a society face is climate change. Yeah, I definitely think that climate change is something that's a super big problem now because it affects every single human on the planet, regardless of class or country or region or anything like that. So I think it's really, it doesn't make sense to not be putting as many resources as we possibly can towards addressing that problem. And I know this has been an issue we've been dealing with for a long time since like the like the past century even, but I think we're at a point now where people are finally starting to realize that if we don't do something now, it'll eventually be too late. We have people like Greta Thunberg who are leading like a worldwide movement to try and make change now, and I really feel like we're at a point where we have an opportunity to do that, and I would like to see that happen. Yeah. Zoe, what do you think? I feel like um, with this issue, what's even adding on to that, what's even more unbelievable is when people don't believe that climate change is happening. Like, Look, it's snowing. Like, the, when people say stuff like that, it's just so absolutely ridiculous. But this change definitely has to be systematic. It can't, re I, I don't believe it can be done by the, um, by like the individuals here and there. Of course, like all the individuals um, coming together to create a movement, like go, um, going under Greta's like um, movements about climate change, like this is happening. I feel like, um, I feel like that's definitely very important, but at the same time, um, one person just here and one person there, it's hard to make that difference and everyone really needs to support this movement. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. I think I totally agree with both of you on that and that we see climate change as one of the most pressing matters. Uh, for me, when I look big picture, I think that international cooperation mm -hmm. is one for of sure, the biggest yeah. challenges that we're facing. And I think that we see climate change on the forefront of that issue. You know, in as America, we've pulled out of so many international agreements like the Paris Agreement, the Kyoto P Protocols, things that we're no longer supporting to combat climate change. And I, I, so personally, you know, when I look at the matter, I think that we do need to see more international cooperation um, and not just from, you know, big players like America, but from, you know, everyone all around the world to combat, right. you know, climate change that we are all facing. Yeah, I think part of that, too, is that if you have one big country like the US or China not doing their part, mm. that basically just sends a message to every other country that it doesn't matter. And sure. like, there's no point if the US is doing it, if China is doing it, if all of these other countries are, are doing it, then why should we hurt our economy for the sake of protecting a planet that other people are not willing to do the same for? Definitely, yeah. So mm. what do you think? We're also, I think uh, this country is like the second largest contributor to climate change, like the amount of waste that we use, the amount that we consume because of like capitalism and materialism. 
Um, and I feel like it's just so irresponsible for us not to be a part of this change, especially since we're such large contributors to it in, in comparison to other countries that are a lot smaller in population. And um, yeah, just yeah, just their overall contribu contribution to global warming. Yeah, definitely. So I, I know that the segment that we have today, it's, uh, it's more about, you know, what are our hopes for 2020, but I think, you know, we could get into a little bit, you know, discussing how we're going to get there. Mm -hmm. So just, you know, on this, this climate change issue that, I, you know, I, I think we all agree is kind of one of the biggest international concerns globally. Well, what do you guys think are maybe some things that could be done, some solutions? Uh -huh. I think the first step is we need people to stop saying that climate change isn't real. I think there are so many issues in the world where it's valid for people to have different opinions, but climate change is not one of those. Like, you can't have an opinion on something that's basically an objective fact. Like, you can't say my opinion is that 2 plus 2 is 5. You're just wrong. Uh -huh. I think it's the same thing with climate change. The facts are very clear. The science is very clear. And we're not going to be able to solve a problem that we don't even acknowledge exists. Mm -hmm. So I think to actually be able to bring change, we need to... I mean, starting off with the United States, we need to acknowledge this as being the pressing issue that it is, and then from there, we can work towards trying to find solutions. Sure. Uh, Zoe, what do you think in terms of solutions? Um, no, I definitely agree. Like, the first thing, we have to make sure that everyone knows that this is a real thing and this is happening, because I do agree there's objective and subjective truth. This is objective truth, that this is happening, that global warming is happening and that we're killing off the Earth um, and all the species. Um, so I definitely agree. Like, that's the first step we need to take. Yeah, definitely. I, I think, you know, you guys have heard, heard my opinion on it, you know, the, that, that need for more international cooperation. And I think that, um, you know, countries like America, like China, India, you know, we need to be, as global leaders, we need to be showing the world that we can move towards progress, both by re-entering into old agreements like, say, the Paris Climate Accords or the Kyoto Protocol, um, but also pioneering new technologies to achieve mm -hmm. a sustainable Absolutely, future yeah. here at home. Like, um, looking at renewable energy, so solar, wind, you know, and beginning to move away from fossil yeah. fuels. Because I think so often <clears> the <throat> argument against working to solve climate change is that, oh, we have jobs dependent on coal, mm -hmm. or we have so much oil and the economy is based on oil, we would lose so much money if we stopped doing that. But I think, in truth, if we were to become, like, if the U.S. were to become the world's like global leader in renewable energy, like solar power, wind power, and just get those technologies improved, get them working, that could not only save the, the planet, but also just bring a huge economic gain to our country, too. So Definitely. I think economic gain and protecting the planet are not at all mutually exclusive. Yeah. Zoe, do you have any other thoughts on that? Um, no, I'm, af I'm afraid not. Yeah. Well, I know. I mean, I think, you know, looking forward, you know, just on this global issue, I, I think that just even even right here, you know, some ideas have been thrown out for solutions. So I think, you know, at least for me, you know, I'm confident that in 2020, um, we're going to see so many new improvements, mm -hmm. you know, I think, and that at, if, you know, if not this year, you know, in the coming years, we're going to be moving towards progress. Yeah, for sure. So now let's um, take a step back from the international community okay. and let's look just at America. So one of the women, um, in the uh, community who did those interviews, she said that in 2020, we need to end the madness. I love that, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. that was, that was uh, kind of caught us off guard. Yeah. When I heard that, I interpreted that as kind of something a little more nationally. I, I mean, I think mm -hmm. it could be interpreted yeah. Yeah, yeah, anyway. Sure. Um, what did you guys think of that? I definitely think that that's true. I think my one of my hopes for 2020, just in the, the US, is that the 2020 presidential election goes well. And what I mean by that is that I hope whichever candidate like wins, it's it's like a good victory, not tainted by like like candidates like like trying to cheat using foreign countries or yeah. trying to just do all this sketchy stuff just to win. And I hope that the candidate that loses is willing to like to say, yes, I lost. My opponent will now be in, in office. Let's work towards like doing good things now, e even though I'm not president. So basically, I just hope that the, the madness ends by both candidates and both parties in the 2020 presidential election being willing to work towards compromise even after that ends. Because yeah. I think by madness, I mean, what I would take that to mean is just this whole political climate of Republicans saying Democrats are always wrong no matter what, I'm not <laughs> listening, and both parties doing that same thing. Like, Democrats are honestly no better. So I think sure. that madness of, of just political polarization, people not willing, not being willing to compromise has to end. Yeah, Zoe, what do you think? Um, I think when I heard her say, 
um, the madness ends, my thought immediately went to the Oval Office and to politics, and how ever since 2016, like the divide between Democrat and Republican <coughs> has been completely has been completely polarized with um, President Trump in office. And so um, with all this debacle, like of course, it's a very stressful time. Like where, what side do I pick? But also I feel like <coughs> things are, um, I feel like social, social movements are getting done with all this, um, I guess with this turmoil, it's really getting people thinking. Like uh, it's really getting people thinking about the past and the present and the future. And so, but I do agree, I'm sorry, I do agree this madness should um, definitely end. And when I was, yeah, sh I feel like she was talking a lot about the Oval Office, especially how we started 2020 with, um, with causing trouble in international affairs, like already 15, 16 days into 2020, and we've already fallen into that rabbit hole. <laughs> and so <clears throat> um, I agree too that I really want this conflict to stop. Like I think America should be as united as possible, but I also understand like, conflict is the way to get you need to have conflict to be able to get things done mm -hmm. and I feel like I've been really happy with the social progress that's been made in 2019 whether it's with um, whether it's with um, economics or even if it's something like something strictly social like body positivity or something like that um, I feel like there's been lots of movements made um, in the right direction and I feel like um, at the end of the day like conflict did do that mm -hmm. like conflict is what got people thinking yeah. So while I do agree, I want I don't want America to be divided in two anymore. I feel like that it's it's not healthy to believe that a country is split strictly in two positions. It's a whole spectrum, but yeah. Yeah, so I, I think that that's a really interesting point to bring up is what conflict means, and, and I completely agree. I, I think that whenever we see change that is meaningful, it has always arisen out of conflict. You know, every time that we see yeah. our nation um, or the world move forward in any meaningful way, we always see a group of people who oppose that change and oftentimes are going to fight to try and keep things yeah. you know, the way they are. So change always takes conflict, right? And But Ben, you mentioned political polarization. So I think that it's not so black and white. You know, we need to ask ourselves, what is good conflict and what is bad conflict going into this year? Mm -hmm. So we've seen um, in our own government an exponential decline in the amount of cooperation between Democrats and Republicans. Mm -hmm. 20 years ago, many of the bills that were passed in uh, the House of Representatives and the Senate were bipartisan. So we saw Democrats and Republicans working together. Now, a majority of the bills that are passed are either completely drafted and voted on by Democrats or drafted on and voted by Republicans. Sure, we still see some bipartisanship, but a lot of that has gone away. So I think that while we need conflict to move forward, and we see that you know, with everything from social rights to building new democracies, we also need some working together, like what Ben was talking about, and an end to the madness of political polarization. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, now we can step back a little bit, uh, go even a little smaller than national scale. Let's talk about ourselves. Do we have any goals for 2020? You want to start us off? Um, uh, I think I just want to do well in college. <laughs> I mean, since we're all three of us are seniors and we've applied to colleges, we're eagerly awaiting our responses. Like, um, ste stepping into a completely new community, potentially a completely new state. It's just a really scary thought because I've spent like all 18 years of my all 18 years of my life like building myself up in Davis, California. Yeah. So it's going to be really interesting seeing like going off into the into the great unknown, <laughs> seeing what we're going to run into. I mean, we're um, for example, like Davis is a really going back to the political um, topic. Davis is a heavily liberal community, and so it's going to be really interesting to go and just be reminded that the world is a lot bigger than this population of 60,000 residents in Davis, California. Yeah. Yeah, Ben, what are your goals yeah. for 2020? I think to me it's a similar kind of thing. I'm just, I know I'll be going somewhere new, being a part of a new community, and I want to get to know a lot of people who have experiences that are significantly different from, from my own, like whether they come from a, a different country or they come from some super conservative community unlike Davis here, mm -hmm. or just something very different for me where I can have the opportunity to learn from people who just view the world in a unique way yeah. from what I've come across in my life. Yeah, learning from people, that, yeah. that's good, I like that, yeah. Um, 
for me, what, what are my goals? <laughs> um, it's a tough you know, question. It's a you tough know, question. Yeah. No, 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 definitely, definitely a tough question. Um, I, I think, you know, I, agree, I think I agree with both of you. You know, I want to learn from people. I want to, you know, do well, go off in, into the world, into college. Um, I would say, um, for my own goal, probably to do something really interesting over the summer. Yeah, something, you know, it could be a really fun, maybe a senior trip or maybe something more productive, but I don't know, just to have a really fun, interesting summer. I think yeah. that, that'll be my, my 2020 goal. I like that. Yeah, yeah I really right. like that. To end our segment off for today, what was your guys' New Year's resolution? So how are you guys going to try to be better for this 2020? Um, well, first, uh, one of them was just to be more organized. I mean, um, I tend to be really scatterbrained. So that was one of my smaller resolutions. And then my bigger one is uh, to, um, to, st uh, to enjoy the smaller details in life. Because I've always been taught to step back and see the bigger picture. But sometimes it's really nice to like, look and say, I appreciate this moment for what it is. Not what it like, is going to add up to or like, what disastrous results could come from this event eventually. Just kind of... I enjoy this moment. Yeah. I, I really like that. Yeah. The small thing, I might have to take that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, ben, what were yours? So I had quite a few, but I'll talk about one in particular, which was just to kind of read more and just learn more and really devote myself towards making myself as informed as I possibly can. I think so many of these issues we've talked about, whether it's climate change or, so, or something else, kind of the root cause of that is, or the root cause of us not being able to solve it is just people not knowing things and just yeah. kind of a general ignorance and I've been trying really hard to, to make, sh make sure that I don't fall into that trap of not knowing things yeah. and then having like really strong opinions based on not knowing things and it, it just I think the world as a whole is so much better off when people are willing to acknowledge things they don't know and try to learn more and then use that in information to make a positive change in the world. And that's yeah. something that I'm trying to do. That's a great resolution. I, you know, I think we've all fallen into that trap of you know, believing so sternly that we're right even though we might right. not have all the right, facts. Yeah. And then you know, yeah. finding out that maybe we weren't so yeah. right and you know, just you know, yeah. the, not just the personal embarrassment that can, com that can come from that, but also, you know, the detriments that, you know, yeah. when we believe that we're right, even when we're wrong. Yeah, so I think and then what one. happens on a large, like, societal scale, exactly, that's when, when you yeah. have major problems. So exactly, I think just yeah. Overall, learning is a good thing. Yeah, that's great, that's great. See, my New Year's resolution was to every day to try and do one thing consciously to make someone else's life better. And I think, you know, the, the thought behind that was, you know, you do it consciously and... Um, then it, you know, it becomes habit, right? And just to, to try and become better people, right? Um, and of course, I, you know, I don't mean that in terms of like, oh, it's 11.30, right? Gotta get my, <laughs> get my yeah, right. good deed in for today. <laughs> I, I'm done, that's I'm it. Done. Done. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you got it, you got it done, yeah. yeah. No, but, um, but yeah, no, I, I think that's great. So I think uh, I have great faith in all of our New Year's resolutions and in 2020 as a whole. I do as well. Yeah. All right, well, that's all the time we have for today. So thank you for joining us. I've been your host, Cedric Hughes, and this was Teens on Topic. That's it, guys. Good.